Hi and welcome back to the channel. For those of you that are new to the channel, I'm Sam and along with my family we are the Crafty Blinders. The last video we made we had a few issues with our actuator on our turbo so we ended up replacing that thinking we'd fix the fault uh, but we hadn't. So this next video that you're about to watch basically is us going through the mill, really going through the mill trying to find a fault um, that we thought we'd already fixed. So I'm gonna I'm gonna shed a little bit of light on the subject for you. This this video here has been the hardest video I've ever had I've ever had to make. Um, two and a half weeks of stress, two and a half weeks of contemplating why am I doing YouTube, why am I putting myself under all that additional pressure and trying to balance everything. You know, it's caused a lot of stress for me. Causes a lot of stress for my family and it, stress for people that I impose on um, need help with from. It's it, YouTube's a roller coaster. If anybody tells you that this is a quick fix to make money, it isn't. We are basically modern day storytellers who get paid very little for what we do, but it's hard sometimes. It's really hard to make the content work to try and stay positive while you're making this content. This video, you'll see me highs, lows, <laughs> I'm all over the shop, um, but it's hard. So when we ask you to click like and subscribe and share it with your friends and comment, that is our, our way of getting some feedback from you. It makes us want to keep producing the com content for you. If I can make a video that helps somebody, I get a lot from that. If I read in the comment, cheers Sam, thanks a lot, that's helped me right out, i fixed that problem now. That makes all this crap that I go through worthwhile. And it, it is that simple. You ask any of, any of the YouTubers out there that haven't got the big figures and haven't got the, the amount of followers you think they should have, why they keep doing it, and they'll tell you, it's that reason. So, I hope you enjoy today's video, I hope you like it, bear in mind where I'm coming from, it is a really emotional video for me because it's, I'm up and down, I'm up and down and I really did feel like pulling the pin on all this YouTube stuff because I'd had enough, it was hard enough trying to fix a van, even harder trying to make good content for you guys to watch and even be interested in watching it. You don't want to listen to some West Cumbrian divvy <laughs> ranting in his garage. <laughs> but hey, you just keep coming back, so I must be doing something right. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy the video. Take care. Hit like, subscribe, and share it with your friends, please. <laughs> Morning, everyone. Look, clocks have gone back. It's nice and dark. It's actually 10 past 6 in the morning, so I need to do a little job before I go to work. Boo wants to play, don't you? Where's your ball? Where's your ball? Find your ball. Where is it? Go and look for your ball. Anyway, she wants to play. But I need... Let me just sort myself out here. Right, I need to get a part number off this sensor down here. We've been out in the van. We swapped the turbo over. But what's happened, the pigtails come back up and it keeps bringing up this fault um, I'll show you the fault in a, in a second but it keeps bringing up this fault code and I think it's the N75 sensor now I'm glad I, I changed the turbo because the actuator was was <laughs> can you hear that in the background? so be quiet, we're video on the actuator was worn so I'm glad we changed that out because I think that would have failed in the very near future and we are in a good place now we've got a, a new reconditioned turbo on there with a two year guarantee, we've got a new actuator on there so because this fault's coming back up, I don't know if one's affected the other but I'm sure that if I change out this N75 it will, it will sort us out um, hopefully, fingers crossed nothing to lose have we? really tricky to show you this so this is a turbo actuator 
here. This is the pipework that runs down and it goes to this part here that you cannot see. <laughs> and that's the problem I've got, I can't see it. So I need to take it off to get the part number to make sure that we get the right one. So what I'll do is I'll take that off. I think it's two. Oh shit. Yeah, don't don't lean on don't lean on this part. There's, there's a good chance you might break it. <coughs> Oops. <laughs> Right, let's uh, put the light over there. Right, I'm going to take that off now. Okay. So there we have the part. Now, I'm not sure if it will focus in on the part numbers. Right, I need to take a photo of that. So I'm trying to hold this part up with one hand take a picture with the other focus in take a picture right let's go and see if we can read that we're going to check if the N75 turbo boost solenoid is vacuuming properly so I've set that up and when I fire it up it should go around and uh, we should see well, we should see some movement anyway. I'm pretty sure it's not meant to do that. So I bought a new um, sensor just in case that was the problem. So it's not an exact replacement, but it's a it's a Pierberg, which is still an OEM part. Maybe should have unpacked it before I started talking. But yeah, the N75 sensor. That's it there. It sits down round about, round about at the bottom of the headlight, and basically, it's got a multi plug on it. There's a drain on it, multi plug drain, and then two pipes as well. Basically. That there, I believe, has had an intermittent fault on it because we put the new turbo on, we drove it for a couple of days, the pigtail light kept coming back up, but we didn't go into fault. Uh, we didn't actually go into fault, an engine fault, an engine management fault. <laughs> Bloody hell, that took some getting out. But anyway, we're going to change this, and hopefully, this is the end of all our problems. So that's the sensor there. It sits on this mountain here. Which I've undone just to show you. Um, it's a little bit awkward to be honest. So I'm gonna disconnect this cable here, disconnect all of the vacuum pipes after that, and that should be us. So it's, it's a bit of an awkward place. So there's your water, there's your water bottle, and you can just see down there the drain. That's that white one there. Um, yeah, that's it there. So we've replaced that. Obviously, we took this pipe off and it comes around to the drains. So we've put that back on. That was a little bit tight to get off, but again, just pry in the end of there and it comes off. We've replaced both the bottom pipes. Swap them over. And the main one comes up to the top of the turbo actuator. I can't really show you that. It's, there you go. So that joins there. There's no real issues there. This all this pipe works good. You know, I've checked it the other day and I've checked it again tonight. So I think we should just fire it up and see what it does. Alright, let's see what happens now. No pigtail. Oh. So the other night, the pigtail come on, and I just went and cleared all the faults. There were some codes uh, that were pending, I cleared them, and it was fine. I drove it for a couple of days, only for the pigtail to come back on. And when I went back in, it was the same fault code again. 
So it seems to be cured. I'm hoping it's cured. Fucking hell, it's just done it. Engine management and pigtail. Oh, my head's fried with this fucking van. So you go, it's impending again as well. No permanent cause. Right, let's go back. So I've had it running for a little while. Um, I'm going to start it up again and see what happens. Hopefully, um, I don't know, <laughs> I really don't know what's going on with it. Um, I'm just going to have a check of this cord down here, see if it's still there. So we'll go back at the pending cords, it's still sat there. Start goes. No start goes, so that's no, there's no engine management ones, but however there was previous pending cord. I'll give it a couple of minutes again. And it's there. Uh, right, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to take some advice. <laughs> I thought we fixed it. Really did think we'd fixed it. So back to the drawing board. Bit gutty to be honest. I thought that would have done it. There's one thing, we've narrowed down the field. <laughs> so, I don't know, I really don't know. We'll, uh, it, the actuator may just need set up, I don't know. I'll, um, I'm gonna take some advice off my brother, I'll have a chat with him later and see what he says. But, really am gutted. Well, it seems that the actuator is not operating fully, um, so we're looking for an air leak now. And hopefully, hopefully we find it, but we're uh, there's just not enough pressure to lift lift the actuator all the way by the sound of it. So lift under bonnet. Searching for the leak. When I'm sat in here, ready to press the button to clear the fault anytime we get to the point where we need it cleared. You know, we're ready and waiting. Angry cliff by the look of it. Raging. So, Cliff's trying on a, another solenoid on the vacuum, uh, the N75 solenoid, just in case we've got a faulty one. Um, we just kept going to fault straight away. So we'll see. New N75 sensor, new turbo, new actuator. Right, um, where to start? I stopped <coughs> I stopped recording earlier when I was down at Cliffs because we found what was wrong. Um, the new turbo was knackered. It's absolutely drained me this job. It's I've just I've been chasing a fault that I've thought I'd already fixed. So I've spent money changing the N75 sensor when I didn't need to. I've also changed the auxiliary pump because that was noisy in some 
some of the forums I was on, they said that can affect it as well. Um, <laughs> I don't know how, but basically, I've spent another hundred and odd quid on them two parts when the part that I thought would solve all my problems just created another one for me. It's failed, you know, the, the waste gate's jammed open. Um, I can still drive it, but I'll keep getting the pigtails. So I am a little bit frustrated. I am, I'm beaten, to be honest. Um, it's Sunday tomorrow, so I can't ring the guys at London Turbos to talk about it with them. So I'm gonna have to ring them Monday morning and uh, well, we'll keep you in the loop. We'll see what happens. Um, well, I don't know. I'm fed up. Here we are again, back in the garage. Obviously, things didn't go too well. We went to St. Cliff yesterday, but... Um, I spoke to London Turbos today, and I've got to strip the old the, the old unit. I was going to call it. I've got to strip the unit they sent me off and send it back to them, where they'll inspect it. Um, obviously, we believe that's where the issue lies now. Um, fit a new turbo, you don't expect that to uh, to have a very similar problem to the one that you've just taken off. Um, obviously, the actuator moves. The wastegate it controls the wastegate position so when when i fired the van up um initially we cleared the faults but it did bring a pigtail up and i cleared that pigtail and i thought that was it i thought that was a problem dealt with but it wasn't it kept registering this fault all the time so off i went thinking i've maybe changed the wrong part but we changed the N75 uh, sensor, which is the solenoid that allows the vacuum, that controls the vacuum back up to up to the actuator. So we changed that out as well, thinking it was that. Couldn't clear the fault. I could drive the van. The van was great. It was a little bit lethargic. Uh, we had no boost, but top end, it would still pull 60, 70 mile an hour. It, there was no issue at that end. But when you think about it, the wastegate was wide open and obviously... It was just like when we're getting up to speed it's 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 no different so a bit of investigation work down at cliffs as you saw in the video we spent a, an hour or two on it and we found that the the wastegate arm doesn't move so i'm going to strip it off tonight i'm going to get it packed up and sent back but before we do that when it's off i'm going to show you where the problem is but this has battered my head I, <laughs> I don't usually let things get me down, but this has, it has got to me. This last two weeks, um, messing about, we've had to cancel Easter, it's it's now Monday, I'm going to strip this part, send it back, that's Tuesday, they'll receive it Wednesday, hopefully I can get a quick turnaround, and uh, they'll get it back to me, as soon as they get it on Wednesday I'm going to ring them, and hopefully it's back in the post for Thursday. Maybe salvage something of the Easter holidays, but... As it stands, we won't be going far. Bit gutted. Um, we usually got a Whitby on uh, on Easter. This year we're going to miss it. There's no, there's no way around it. I even offered buying to buy another one off them today, and the guys at London Turbos to refund me. But basic statement from them was, if you're making a warranty claim, which I am, they have to repair the one. That I've sent them back and they'll send that back to me I don't know what difference it makes like because at the end of the day I haven't broke it we've gone nowhere in it it's it we put it on it didn't work so anyway the answer was if I bought another one I would own two turbos now I don't need two turbos it would be nice to have the turbo on there and fixed and ready for the weekend but not at the price of 300 quid plus all the other bits that I have to fit with it. So, a bit gutted, but we'll take it on the chain. Anyway, let's get stuck into stripping this out. Nice sunny day anyway, let me show you. Let me show you this. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping everybody's enjoying the summer. This sunny weather. But yeah. 
I think we'll pop the radio on. Not while I'm recording. <laughs> we'll pop the radio on and we'll get stuck in. I've already started. I've took that little bit off there, took a couple of wires off there. But I thought I'd tell you what we're doing. Anyway, let's get stuck in. Well, I've just been chatting with Rod Gilmore about this turbo and uh, we've come to the conclusion, well I have, that I'm in a fucking horror movie. I'm in a horror movie. <laughs> and uh, it's called The Van From Hell. Every time I think I fix something on the van, it's, I don't know, it's maybe like Christine. You know, remember the movie Christine? Every time I do something with that van, it just shits itself and does something else to me. To mess with my head. Anyway, we've got the turbo off. Let's show you what the problem was. The problem is this little bit here. Now, that actuator is sitting under a lot of tension there, and that just does not want to move. You know, I can get it to go up a little bit, but what you can see there is the final leg of the what would be vacuumed up. So that there should be probably down here. Just moves, you know, ever so slightly. But, I don't know, is it the wrong... I, I don't know what's wrong with it. I'd be guessing if I tried to, to tell you what was wrong with it. But anyway, it's not working right. It needs to go back. Well, that's us broken up for the Easter holidays. Uh, it's Thursday afternoon. And turbo number two's here. There you go, we've checked that the actuator is free moving i'll try and do this with one hand but you know the wastegate is moving so i'm happy with that uh the guys the guys from london turbos uh rang me yesterday and <laughs> i give them the dues they've sent a new turbo out but this you know they say it's my fault i say it's their fault we've not argued they sent me a new turbo out and it arrives the very next day, so thank you very much guys down there. Um, it is what it is. Something's failed. It's cost me time and money, and it's cost them time and money. So we've settled amicably, and hopefully this one will work. So time to put it back on. <laughs> Another afternoon, messing with the turbo. Really looking forward to this. Before sticking it back on the van, I've stuck the temp sensor in. And I've also put the bottom of that, well, the top of that pipe on. Just makes life a little bit easier when we're uh, underneath the van. So everything seems to be right on this turbo. It's time to get it back on the van. Turbo's on, airbox is back on, all the induction sides done. It's now time to fire it up and see if we've cleared that fault. Well, I think we've got an old sensor cord um, laying in the pending, so what we'll do is we'll go back and erase that. there's nothing left in pending yet no pending codes I hadn't cleared that before I just looked in stored codes there we go right fire it up again oh my god what is going on with this van <laughs> well there is a code there but it's not a turbo code. <laughs> well, I don't know if that's a turbo code, but it's not the ones we've been looking at recently. So I'm going to just go and check all the connections under the bonnet and make sure that we haven't knocked something off. Well, that's it running. Um, we do have a flashing pigtail light again. Now that there, it's to do with the turbo now. 
it's something else but it's bringing up just like a generic code um, saying the cooling pump circuit has malfunctioned um, I'm going to go and have a quick look at that now I think it's the auxiliary cooling pump circuit so I'm going to have a little look at that and see see what it brings up God knows maybe I've not plugged it in properly we'll have a quick look anyway but it's funny how that's never shown up before but <laughs> I don't know let's have a little look so the auxiliary pump's there I don't know if you can see them there. I've changed that out recently um, <laughs> I don't know we'll, uh, we'll see if I can I've unplugged it I've plugged it back in hopefully it's just been a loose connection we'll have a look well what do you know unplugging it and replugging it back in cleared the fault so the turbo is working perfectly now Happy days. Just a bit of that. Happy days. Honest to God, it's been it's been a good two and a half weeks that we've had fault codes and engine management lights on and turbo pigtails, uh, turbo faults and pending with the flashing pigtail so this is, I'm knackered, <laughs> this is the first day in such a long time that this van hasn't had a fault in it so fingers crossed we're going to take it for a little test run now and if it comes back and it's perfect I'm getting bladdered <laughs> I'm going to have a few cans to celebrate, but I tell you what, it's been a slog. It really has been a slog. Right, we're out and about. We're test driving the van. Um, and you're not going to believe it, it's gone back into limp mode. Um, still don't know what the problem is. I'm going to have to do a bit of investigating. But while we're out, we've come to witness and watch one of the oldest sporting events in Cumbria. It's a game called Uppies and Downies. And it, takes, it kicks off every Good Friday. And runs right through Easter, and I think it's played on the last match is played on Tuesday. Um, so we're down at Tesco Car Park, we're gonna have a walk across and watch them kick off. Please stop helping me if I still record you. <laughs> right then, the drama continues. We've We've had the van on the diagnostic system again, just to see what was wrong with it. Um, we were bringing up a couple of faults. One was the math sensor and the other was the turbo boost. Um, looking at them two and doing a bit of diagnosing and listening and using our senses, we can hear a bit of an air leak. Now I think I know where it's coming from. So the pipe that joins the turbo, there's a little seal in there, the plastic piece that goes on there, it's called the boost pipe. That there has a little little seal in it and it did look a little bit worn the other day. I want to put it on, I might not have seated it properly. So I'm going to have a little play with it now, see if I can actually do anything with it. If I can't, I'll order a new one tomorrow. Well, I'll call it a tomorrow. We'll order a new one on Tuesday. Fingers crossed, that puts us back in the game for attending a show at um, Stratford next weekend. We've missed the Easter weekend, we usually got Whitby, but um, this year we've given a miss because obviously I've got issues. But I'm going to try this now, hopefully we can get it fixed. Either way, I'm going to order a new seal. If this does fix it, all well and good we've had a clear dash for a couple of days now but every now and then as I'm decelerating and there's like a bit of well it's basically when I come to a stop um, at the end of my journey in between it, it's fine but when I come to the end of my journey it'll just ping up a, a pigtail and when we check it I have been guilty I've only checked for one cord I keep seeing the same cord which is the boost pressure uh, position sensor it's, <laughs> I had missed the math sensor so 
hopefully it is just this this little air leak we'll have a look at it now and uh, see how we get on if you look around the outside of there you can see oil so it has been leaking air there and it's been blown oil past the seal so 100% sure now that's where the problem is so this is the loose pipe assembly and there you go there's the o-ring and you can see there it's chewed up on the edge so i think that's that's what the issue is we'll give that a clean off and have a look back at it daylight so we've cleaned that up we've popped it back in um it's not in the best condition so we shall get a new seal for that mm. <laughs> i think i found the problem okay on this housing there's three notches there's one there's the second one over there and the third one is just there by the bolt hole now they line up with this little bit of kit that holds the ring in and it goes only goes in one way so i'm going to try and show you the right way of putting it in so we line them two up there That one lines up with there, third one lines up there, and that notch and that little bit out of it should all line up together, just like that. Happy days. So we'll try and put this back on, hopefully we'll put a little bit of oil on it, around these edges just to lube it while we slide it on and hopefully that will give us enough seal to test drive it again tonight and then uh, order a new part on Tuesday Previously there was a bit of a, a hissing noise just coming from where I showed you just before. It's gone. So that was definitely where the issue was coming from. So now we've got it sorted, we know that we need a new seal for there. Obviously I need a new oil seal as well for the tank. So we'll order both of them this week. Uh, oh, I'm happy with that. I really am happy. Fingers crossed, that's it. Um, it's been a bit of a slog. But I think we're finally there. You know, if there's no more follow-ups after this, we fixed it. We fixed it. It's been behaving itself. It's just thrown up them little pigtails every now and then. And uh, obviously, we had that dicky turbo. We've also gone and changed the N75 sensor. We've also changed the water pump on the top just to be on the safe side. Um, I've got one more little water pump to change. Um, seven year old. Might as well change it now. I'm changing all the others. I'll have a look at that anyway and we'll see um, what the price is. It might be one of them that we leave to it breaks. But we'll have a look anyway. Oh, I'm so much happier. <laughs> really am so much happier that that hissing has gone. Hopefully, problem solved. Look, it's not there, it's down there. It worked. We've got it fixed now. It was a process of elimination. We had to chase the fault, find the fault. Um, there was things happening in the, in the, in the, ECU that I didn't understand um, with the N75 sensor obviously when it dropped out that was because it hadn't it hadn't picked up the 
um, range test on the actuator so because of that it was dropping out so I was looking at a fault there thinking that was a problem and it wasn't it was still the turbo anyway we've got it fixed now thanks to the guys at London turbos for the speedy turnaround that really saved our bacon we have had a few days out um, locally with the van but hey thanks for watching thanks for the support London turbos and uh, thank you guys for tuning in every week hitting that like button, hitting that subscribe button, sharing it and commenting. Anyway, we'll see you again. Take care. Thank you for your continued support. If you like what we're doing, consider subscribing, liking and sharing with your friends. Also, you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Thanks for watching and until next time, take care.